Last week in Deuteronomy chapter 13, we mentioned the uh, dangers and hindrances that can come into our lives when we're serving God. So there were different things where God would allow some hindrance to enter into our lives in order that he could prove us to determine whether we would serve him or no. So the walk with God isn't always an easy one. God has ordinances. He has rules. Some of them are confusing. Some of them make us scratch our head and wonder why in the world would God set this rule or this law forward. It doesn't make sense to us, especially sometimes the laws don't make sense to us sitting here in 2020, looking back at something like this and saying, oh, well, what in the world? And then you, you don't necessarily wonder why some of the scholars or liberal Christians look at this and say, ah, this is archaic. This isn't for us. But I believe every word of God is pure and is intended for us today. It's eternal. There's nothing in the word of God that's going to expire. Nor can I ever get to a point in my learning of the scriptures where I just go, ah, you know what, I've got that figured out. I've already talked about this. I've already preached about this. I've already studied this. I'm going to leave that aside because certainly I know all there is to know about that particular passage. And Deuteronomy 14 is one of these where I've read it a bunch of times. And even in my study of it this time, I got more out of it than I did the time before. And when I go to it again in my Bible reading, I'll get more out of it than I did the time before, and the time before, and the time before. And that's going to continue until the Lord comes and gives me full understanding when I'm with Him in heaven. Because this book is eternal. This book is God, the Bible says. You're never going to finish this book. And the man that says, oh, I've, I've exhausted all that I can of this book, mark it down, he's full of pride. This book should humble you. The more you know of the scriptures, the more you should say, I know nothing of these scriptures. And I've witnessed men that, I, I remember a man that came to one of my churches uh, years ago, and he would, he would preach only scripture verses with a closed Bible. And so he wouldn't add his, his, his uh, dialogue, he wouldn't add his words, he would just stand there and from memory say scripture verses for the entirety of an hour-long sermon. And it was like point by point by point flowed as if he was preaching. It was like the very oracles of God there. And if you talk to a man like that in his 90s, he would say, I know nothing about the Bible. He would have the attitude of the Apostle Paul, wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from the body of this death. Any man who thinketh he knows a thing knows he knows nothing at all. I just, I just quoted that, you know, I probably butchered that one. But that's essentially what the Bible should teach you. You think you know something? The most important thing you can know is that you know nothing at all. So God shows in the previous chapter that our flesh, our false brethren, our family, and our factions that enter in our lives, they're there to prove us, to essentially challenge us, to encourage us to take the next steps for God. God lets these things into our life so he can make us stronger as believers. The Lord wants essentially chapter 13 and verse 4 to come to pass in fruition in everyone's life who would name the name of Christ. 13 and verse 4, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. There's your marching orders as a Christian. <laughs> Fulfill all that in perfection. Tell me you got that verse figured out. Okay? The Lord wants us, nevertheless, to be challenged and in that direction. When he rebukes and chastens us, it's, it's to that end. He wants, like verse 11 says, And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. He wants you to be different than the nations that are surrounding you. Where you live, you ought to, you ought to stand out like a candle in a dark room. Because why? You're ser searching after God. You're seeking after God. You're walking after God, fearing him, obeying his voice, and all these things. And above all things, you're just hearing him, what he says. Fearing his very presence and, and influence in your life. He wants you to do right. He wants the fulfillment of then 13 and verse 18 at the end there. Do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. And at the end of the day, you ought to be able to lay your head on your pillow and say, I've done right in the sight of the Lord thy God, my God today. I've done right. His eyes will look on me and say, yes, amen, he's done right. You know what? If you've done wrong that day, before you lay your head on your pillow, just say, Lord, forgive me for this and for this and for this. And you know what? God gives you a clean slate and you'll go to bed. Done right in his eyes. Because if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Not most of them, not part of them, all of them. All of your unrighteousness. So keep a short tab with God. 
Of course we all sin. Of course we all fall short. But if you are constantly seeking him and constantly asking for that cleansing power of his word in your life and constantly repenting of the sins that you do fall into, he will look at you as one that does right in his sight. And it will be commended. 